Live from Austin, Texas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell EMC World 2016. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Dell EMC World, everybody. Chad Sackich is here, he's the president of the Converge Solutions Division at Dell EMC, good friend of the Cubes. Great to see you again, man. It's good to see you, Dave, Stu. How's life, fellas? Life's good, it's good. You're traveling around like crazy, you're fighting a little cold, I see, but. You know, I'll, <laughs> I'll be a slightly less Energizer Bunny version of myself. I am sick as a dog, but uh, energized by all the awesomeness that I see here, not only at, at the Cube, of course, <laughs> but everything going on at Dell EMC World, which is great. Well, so. Very exciting times for the industry yep. generally, but specifically for Dell EMC and, and you. Uh, you got a new role, relatively new role, now it's not yep. so new. Uh, but so talk about from your organization specifically and how the merger or acquisition has affected that. So, uh, what did you eat for dinner last night? Salad with shrimp. <laughs> and were you here at the hotel? Yeah. You ordered it from a menu, right? Yes. Was it a good salad with shrimp? It was really good. Excellent. Austin, good and food And you, you had a fixed set of choices and it came out and it was nicely delivered, right? It was a good solution, yes. Fantastic. <laughs> Basically. I didn't want to cook. <laughs> more and more customers are realizing that while it's fun to cook a meal every once in a while, <laughs> that if you're not in the business of cooking meals, it's very nice to be able to have something that you just order off a menu. I'd pay extra for that. In fact, many customers <laughs> do. Frankly, between that realization, the trend towards SaaS, as well as public cloud IaaS, is making it clear to customers, don't waste time, money, and effort on the things that aren't uniquely you. And uh, frankly, it's every customer doesn't deploy vSphere or Hyper-V in some radically different way. Um, so the trend towards converged and hyper-converged platforms turnkey IaaS, turnkey PaaS platforms is overwhelming. It's the biggest growth part of our business. Uh, and then being able to give customers an on-ramp if they're not ready to go there the whole way with solutions that are maybe not fully engineered but de-risked is a way for them to get on that journey and realize, frankly, you know what, I want more of this, just order stuff off of the menu so I can actually focus on doing what makes me a better bank, a better hospital, a but better then, Of retailer. course, then there's my Italian grandma, grandma I mean my Italian aunts yeah. who say, why buy sauce from the jar when you can spend a week ma making it, freeze it, and then eat it for, for a year. So there's still those folks out there. It's a dying art. <laughs> <laughs> it, really, it really is. <laughs> but you still, you still yeah. serve those, so, so those look, chefs. The, if you look at the entirety of Dell EMC and Dell Technologies, uh, there are many, many more humans innovations, dollars spent still in the ingredients, building better storage products, better uh, servers, better networking, better virtualization in VMware, better uh, software development tools in Cloud Foundry and, and in Pivotal uh, than there is in converged platforms and solutions. We're still a, a smaller but increasingly important part of the business. So, so yeah, I mean, the, the, the reality is that many customers still are building their own meals. What is changing though, Dave, and, and this is a, uh, Wikibon has done their own research that validates this, is that is declining. And it's declining because people are realizing that they have better things to do with their time and their money. Excluding your, your, your aunt and your uncle that make their own sauce. You know where we stand on this, Chad. We've been, yeah. we, we think, we're, we think the, the industry forecasts are, are low in terms of the percent that's going to be converged by the end of the decade. We think it's going to be much higher than what what we've seen. And so. look, um, I jump out of bed every day, sick or not. My team jumps out of bed every day, sick or not. Um, because we're passionate about basically getting customers to stop building things that they should instead consume, which is a simplification. It forces some difficult decisions, because there's always people inside those customers that say, hey, this is a risk for me, my value, and all that stuff. But inevitably, what we're really giving them is an opportunity to do something that's more differentiated, right? And we got to do that across multiple stacks. We're clearly going to do it with VMware. We're clearly going to do it with Pivotal. But we got to do a ton, uh, and we already do with Microsoft, with Red Hat, with the, with the container ecosystem. Um, it's, a, it's a big, exciting world out there. All right, Stu, I know you're dying to jump in. This is your wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, Chad, 
we know that Michael saw Converge and Hyperconverge as one of the, the biggest reasons that Dell and EMC would be better together. Yep. Uh, I think, what, what's the thing I heard? You know, the, the power of two is one of the key messages of the yep. week here. Um, so now, we've been talking to you since you took this job. It's there, September 7th came, you're one company, so tell us, you know, what's, so what's the power of two? Uh, what, what's good? What have you done? What, what are you still still left to do? So, so uh, I've been I've been sufficiently public about this that I I can tiptoe around an announcement that will come out tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> um, but look, in HCI, something that is fascinating and it wasn't really evident to me until we became uh, HCI powerhouse under our own right. Uh, VxRail's been wildly successful. We've gone from in, at the end of Q2, you know, 1,700 nodes, roughly four nodes per appliance. Now it's 3,800 nodes at the end of Q3. That's 123% quarter on quarter growth. I learned something fascinating, which is that while the value of the offer and, and what makes up the offer, a lot of it is software. The majority of it is software. Trying to be in that business without a wicked awesome, as they would say in Boston, uh, x86 server supply chain is really, really hard. And again, people are like, I don't get that. Well, when you have customers in Nigeria, in Timbuktu, in Paris, and in Beijing, and they all want to have slightly different variations, and they want to have the latest technology inside those platforms, trying to do that through an arm's length ODM relationship doesn't work. So, we've already done a couple of things that are public. We did the Scale.io Ready node. That has a massive effect on the ability to bring in the latest Flash, latest Broadwell, and lower the cost entry and top scaling mark of what we do with Scale.io. Awesome. We already actually have made a VX Rack with PowerEdge Quotable. There's one other HCI thing that isn't yet there, which if you tune in tomorrow. You might hear about VX Rail. You, what? <laughs> no. I, it, well, I mean, it's something that starts in a VX and hyperconverge. I don't know what you're talking about, buddy. What, 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 what's the top selling uh, HCI solution that EMC, Dell EMC uh, sells today, Chad? I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but look, it, it's, it's had great momentum, great response. Um, it, it, it's a fascinating, I think, lesson actually, not just for me personally, but I think uh, for a lot of the part of the company, where basically we, we listened closely on what didn't work, went back to you know, the start, and basically have built what is one of the fastest growing products that I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, so I mean, Chad, you know, I, I wrote about a year ago that Dell, you know, at the end of the day, we've talked about Cisco for years, Chad. At the end of the day, Cisco mostly cares about selling core switching. Michael has big aspirations and a lot of things for the company, but if he can sell more servers, that's goodness for him. And if you look at the converge and hyperconverge space, he's got a lot of horses in this race, especially in HCI. You've got your VX Rail, you've got your friends at Nutanix, which yep. is the booth sitting right behind you here, which I, I think you were at their headquarters with your arms around yep. uh, two of the chief executives saw there. saw some good tweets there. Um, <laughs> even, you know, SimpliVity's base configuration uses Dell servers, yep. you know, Pivot3 uses Dell servers. There's a lot of options out there for Dell you know, the, on the server side, Dell EMC to win. Uh, of course, I know you want VxRail to be the, the lead I, horse there. I, I want customers to be happy, yeah. number one. I think that if they've standardized on vSphere, which is some subset of the market, it's a large proportion of the market, I think that the offer that Dell EMC and VMware have built together in VxRail and VxRack SDC is the best. However, there are customers that don't want that. They, they, they want to either not have VMware, in other words, they actively do not want VMware, or they're customers that really, really need hypervisor choice. <clears throat> and I'm happy to say that uh, Dell EMC XC, which is done in partnership with our friends at Nutanix, is uh, also wildly successful. I think the, the mistake that sometimes people think is they think it's a zero sum game. It's not. The HCI market is still early, nascent, and growing, uh, the primary competition against HCI is business as usual, more than anything else. Is this software defined storage stuff ready for prime time? That sort of thing, right? And uh, it's actually quite interesting. I mean, Dell EMC XC is roughly just over a quarter of 
uh, the overall Nutanix customer base by count and uh, growing, growing like wildfire. So I, I think you're right. I mean, there's multiple ways for us to help our customers. There's ways where we add little value or some value. There's ways that we add some moderate amount of value. There's ways that we add high amounts of value. Um, we're going to do all of those. And that's good. Yeah, so you know that zero sum game comment is interesting. I mean, at the macro level, the IT business is not quite a zero sum game, but it's getting there. You mm -hmm. got to gain share yeah. to grow dramatically. How, what's your share gain strategy? So that, you're right, at the macro. If you zoom way, way, way out, the $2.7 trillion of enterprise IT um, in all forms, everything, that's actually still growing, yeah. right? The portion of it that is shrinking is classic on-premises IT. Classic, right? Um, it's shrinking because workloads are going to SaaS, which means we have to win to the SaaS providers, but that represents a business model challenge because it's a different business model selling to a sales force than to selling to 100,000 people who are deploying ERP. Mm -hmm. um, it's moving to public clouds and hyperscaled, uh, you know, the hyperscale cloud players. It's moving to people running cloud native apps on those public cloud uh, models. The proportion that you know is there that is shrinking has got islands of awesome, right? So that's it's shrinking at about a negative two percent CAGR, right? And I think uh, it's it's an interesting time to see. It. Everyone's got to take strategies on what to do when that is the case. There's an, a subset of it that is the server market, a subset that's the storage market, a subset that's the networking market. Those are all shrinking, standalone. Within them there's islands of goodness, all flash arrays. For example, within the, the $70 billion storage market is a growth area and a place where we're at about 40% share, which is 10% higher than where we are anywhere else and higher than the next top three. However, the island of CI is growing at about 20 to 40% CAGR. And the island of HCI, which is still smaller still, is growing at about 150%. In CI, we're already at 50%. In HCI, our aspiration is to be 60 or 70% of the market, right? So, as on-premises enterprise business is challenged, there's great opportunities for us to help more customers, gain market share, deliver a more holistic offer, at the same time that we win by selling to the SPs and to the uh, SaaS providers. Well, EMC's always done that well. I mean, a lot of companies, they get into that vortex. EMC's somehow always been able to get the new stuff big enough and growing fast enough to offset the decline in the old stuff. It's a... Uh, How? It's an, it's an, it's, <laughs> so, you know, it's... It, I spent a lot of time thinking about this because as much as I, I'm, a, I'm a nerd, a geek, and a technologist, uh, and that's, that's my root and DNA. And you are, and I, and I mean I, that I, with Thank you. <laughs> I mean compliments. that with, with, with love. It's, <laughs> uh, nerds of the world unite. <laughs> um, you know, as I've continued to basically expand in my, in my career and learn and grow from other human beings, culture is such a potent force. And uh, you know, we're blessed to have a culture which is pragmatic, <laughs> right? So we, we don't kid ourselves when we're behind. So, so there's, a, there's a hazard when you're a leader that you can delude yourself when things start to go sideways. So the first thing you need to have is a, a willingness to go, hey, what we're doing isn't working. <laughs> and a, a fierce amount of paranoia where we tend to overreact to potential threats and challenges. Uh, now, sometimes, sometimes we don't get it right on the first go, but there's been very few times where I think we've been asleep at the wheel. And uh, you know, I, I, we're not always first. Uh, we try to be, but uh, very rapidly, you can see what we've done in the all-flash market. You can see what we're doing in the software-defined market. You can see what we're doing inside the hyper-converged market. The con we created the converged infrastructure market. And then, you know, it's not just the stuff that you would normally associate with us. Cloud Foundry, would you say it's doing well? And you feel frank, you can answer it however you'd like. In pockets, it's doing very well. Yeah. And, you know. It, you know, it's an emergent space. And right? it's got some big backers. 
Huge backers, yeah. customers dig it, it's great. What people don't realize is Cloud Foundry was born as a small project within VMware. And it went through multiple phases and variations before eventually we rallied a whole company, Pivotal, around it. Right? Right. Chad, well, interesting point, just to follow up on that. When we talk about cloud, yep. you know, I, we used to argue that you know, I don't want to just take a full hypervisor and throw it in a cloud. That's one of the reasons why VMware created Cloud Foundry. Yet, last week, <laughs> VMware made an announcement with Amazon to take bare metal servers, put full you know, hypervisors in there. You know, it, it, it seems counter to what we've been talking about on to how I should build a cloud. So I'm, I'm curious the, your, your reaction. <clears throat> the first time that I talked about it with Ragu and with Ray O'Farrell at VMware, my, my, my colleagues, my respected colleagues, I was like, guys, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> Just being very honest, right? And they were like, Chad, you don't fully understand. I'm like, okay, explain it to me. The first reason I was wrong was that I thought that it was an IaaS on an IaaS, right. right? In other words, I thought that they were going to take the SDDC and Cloud Foundation stack and deploy it on top of EC2, EBS, you know, and, and, and basically creating two layers of abstraction which in essence do a similar function doesn't make a lot of sense, just natively. Mm. Uh, as I got exposed to actually how they were doing it, it started to go, wait a second, basically, an on-premises infrastructure stack like VX Rack, v SDC, and VX Rail has got a certain economic strength and weakness. Like if I, I've made it super easy for a customer to acquire a VX Rail, they can have it, they can order it, and it'll be there in seven days. And then the process of installing it takes minutes. And if they wanted to add more, they could easily add more. That is pretty darn elastic relative to traditional infrastructure. However, it's even more elastic if you say, it's already out there and I can go and I can just deploy it inside an infrastructure which is sitting there in the public cloud. And the, and the reality of it is, is that in that sense, what they've done with AWS and SoftLayer, they are emulating hardware, right? So it's completely natural for VMware in the same way that they sit on top of servers and networks and storage thingamabobs, that they sit on top of servers, networks, and storage thingamabobs that are not on premises. And the sweet spot for those are going to be the workloads that literally are so elastic that you can't wait for me to ship you a VX rail, right? However, there's truckloads of workloads that are not that elastic. And I think the, the answer to get them as easy, as uh, uh, fundamentally transformational to operate is converge and hyper-converge infrastructure on-prem. I think that that's where the world is going to, that's where the puck is going, as a Canadian would say. Yeah, right? and your description makes a lot of sense to, to me, the way you just described that. I still think, I don't know what you think about this, Stu and, and Chad, is it's, it also makes sense to take that cloud stack and put it on-prem on a yep. hyper-converge infrastructure. So what Azure stack is doing is smart. And, and uh, we do that today with VxRack, SDDC, right. and EHC. Right. We do it with Cloud Foundry with NHC. I can tell you, uh, I'm very excited to take the great stuff that Dell has been doing sure. with Microsoft. So the precursor to the Microsoft Azure stack was CPS. Doing great, we've got customers. There's more customers with Dell and Microsoft doing that today than anyone else. You can bet your bottom dollar that we are going to lean in heavily into Maz together with Microsoft. If it's not a, if it's not a zero sum game, that's a game you want to play. And uh, if you think about VxRack, SDDC, and the Enterprise Hybrid Cloud being our VMware opinionated stack with SoftLayer and AWS running Cloud Foundation as the public extension, you can bet your bottom dollar there will be a VxRack Azure stack with a Azure public cloud extension, just like we're already doing with CPS. Chad, I can't let you go without asking you the Cisco question. Uh, you know, Dell EMC together now, you know, VBlock, VXBlock, I know it's a robust business, but there, there's got to be a little bit of tension there. You know, uh, you know I, I saw the video between Chuck Robbins yep. and Michael Dell, and that's good, but you know, with all the hyper-converged <laughs> stuff coming, uh, you know, VMware, Microsoft, everything you're doing there, uh, you know, UCS versus you know, PowerEdge, What's the response? Uh, so first things first, and our customers, if, 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 
if anyone's watching that is thinking about this question, the first thing you need to understand and hear from me is you have nothing to worry about. Our partnership is solid as a rock with Cisco. Our commitment to them is solid and their commitment to us is solid. Uh, we are their single largest customer in a sense. And I think that's a lot of, a lot of people don't understand the nature of the V-Block and VX-Block business is that they are an OEM to us. I struggle to imagine a scenario where they wouldn't happily take our hundreds of millions of dollars that we spend being their single largest OEM source for UCS business, where they would say, no, I'm, I'm not interested in doing that anymore. In other words, it's fundamentally sound for business and structural reasons, not just alliance, squishy reasons. Right? Making money. It's real, it's, <laughs> and, and, and by the way, it's a huge business with 6,000 customers who love it and are happy and it's growing, it's 20 to 40% per annum. So, you know, I said it once, I'll say it again, rule number one of business, don't punch your customer in the face, <laughs> right? So keep doing what you're doing, which is good. The second thing I'll just say that will make it pretty clear is, and I'm trying to figure out how to do this in, in political soundbite land, which is not my forte, right? Who's the number one server vendor on the planet? From revenue or uh, units? <laughs> Take HP your revenue, Dell units. Dell units, right? <laughs> um, so basically, by the way, who's number one in blades? From, From is it, isn't, no, uh, maybe Cisco. Cisco. Yeah, yeah Cisco. Yeah. So who's number two in blades? From a unit standpoint? Unit no. and revenue. Yeah, revenue? HP. I mean, yeah, HP yeah, is, I yeah, HP. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. How are these statements all simultaneously yeah, yeah. true? Yeah. Well, it's because the server market is big and broad and mm -hmm. wide, and, yeah. and sometimes system architectures are a better fit for blades, sometimes they're a better fit for modular, sometimes they're a better fit for rack mount, and each one of those has a sweet spot in a system level design. When you have a thing which has a SAN, it biases towards blades. Sure. And it's because there's an external storage thing. You know what's like that? A VX block. Why would we make an incredibly compelling competitive <clears throat> offer with an OEM ingredient less compelling or competitive? Conversely, yeah, you would. why wouldn't we take PowerEdge and make our hyper-converged portfolio, which doesn't have an array, and therefore biases towards rack mount and modular, and heavily leverage that. And I think it's because people don't think of it and go, when you're buying converged or hyper-converged, the server component is an ingredient. And when you eat a meal, that great salad with shrimp, did you think and decompose it and go, well, I, I think that this is a marvelous iceberg lettuce. No, I mixed it all up. That's right. <laughs> when you're eating the meal, you care about yep. how the whole meal comes together. And frankly, Cisco and UCS makes great V-blocks. PowerEdge is going to make incredible VX rail and VX rack systems. Well, it's been a great partnership, as has the partnership with you, Chad. Thanks for coming on. You win the prize for the biggest crowd today. Hey, yo, everybody. Well <laughs> so, thanks for coming on theCUBE. It's great to see you again. Thanks, Glad everybody. Feel better. Thanks, dude. All right, keep right there, everybody. We'll be back to wrap. This is day one at Dell EMC World 2016. Be right back.